you want to know what is the best no compromise OLED TV in 2024? To answer this question, we put four cost no object OLED TVs in my studio to compare them side by side. The LG G3 and Sony A95L flagship TVs from 2023 versus the LG G4 and Samsung S95D, the top TVs in 2024. With all those TVs sitting next to each other, we can then answer a few questions. How do the 2024 flagship OLED TVs compare to the best of 2023? How does the G4 compare to the G3? What about the S95D and the G4, the best of 2024, against the king of TVs from 2023, the Sony A95L, or the G4 versus the S95D, head to head. Let's find out which TV is best for you. Today's video is brought to you by WhoKeys. Trying to build a PC on a budget, but don't know where to buy your Windows software cheaply? WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my coupon code SF20 and immediate discount with a free upgrade to Windows 11. At the bottom of this order where it says code card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on settings. In the settings menu at the bottom, select update and security select activation, then select change product key, paste what you copied from who keys, click next, click activate, and you're done. You can buy Windows 11 Pro or Office 2019 Pro with my discount code SF20. Yes, I've been using who keys for the last several years on my own PC builds and it just works. So I recently compared these four amazing TVs, the LG G4, G3, and the Samsung S95D, and the Sony A95L. But before we get into that comparison, quick caveat, all four of these TVs are flagship TVs for a reason. They are all awesome and I would love to own any of them as my only TV. But you are picky people, you're buying the best and you wanna know what is the best better than the rest? How is it better than the rest? And today we're gonna do a little bit of that Pixel peeping, for some of you, you may care. For many of you, you may not even see that difference, but it's still worth noting because $3,000, $4,000 is a lot of money. We'll begin by examining their different anti-glare coating with the S95D having the most aggressive glare-free coating, while the G3, G4, and A95L, their coatings are very similar. Check it out. I want to show you guys this image because this is what the TV sees. This is the reflection from the point of view of the TV, Brian. Okay, so you guys see the lights now? So on the Sony, and I wanted to show you guys the differences, right? So the TVs are off. And the Sony on the right, you see I have the light above, right? If you remember, I'll just show you my light again. So what you guys are seeing, right? That blue light that's on the Sony right there is it's it's quite... Actually, it's pretty bright, but on the Samsung, that same light on the ceiling is visible, but it's much more muted on the Samsung, right? So you guys can see it. Whoops, wrong one. Here we go. There you go. See that blue light in the blue ceiling, right? So that can be seen on the Sony right there, if you guys can see that. And so this is the context. Now, the G4 and the G3, their anti-glare gloss is nearly identical to the Sony. So the three points of light on the Sony, so we use the Sony as a proxy, right? Whatever you're seeing on the Sony, the G4 and the G3 will have very similar anti-glare coating. Brian, what are your thoughts on the anti-glare? Well, for context, I absolutely hated it when we saw it at CES. We did a whole video on it. But then I didn't see that at Samsung headquarters, and I didn't see that at Value Electronics. So my thoughts have changed a little bit on it. I don't love it, um, but it does the job it's supposed to do. As you can see, the reflections on the a95L, they are completely swallowed up by the S95D. Let's, let's go to 50% bright white, and you guys will see. On the Sony, right, that little point of light is still visible. But if you go slightly wider, then you'll, you'll see that it does, yeah, it removes the reflection completely at a certain brightness level. So it doesn't matter what TV you have. The issue really is when you go into the darker scenes. So I'm going back down. There you go. So it starts to appear as the scenes get darker and darker. There you go, right? So, so now, that, that, that reflection on 
So that reflection from that top light and that other light in the left-hand corner of the A95L, that's also hitting the S95D. Yes, identical. I made sure. I mean, it's impossible to see. That's why it's like I had it so that they are literally split, but you can see on the very top of the S95D, there's still that little bit of light. So if I go all the way down to zero, right, you can see it, yep. right? And the well, S95D see has an of extra a... point of light on top that the yeah. A95L doesn't have. So I'm going to put up. E4 has pretty good reflection handling as well. It does have. Oh, yeah. No, the G4, the G3, and the A95L, nearly identical. In conclusion, as far as anti-glare, glare-free coating is concerned, the A95L, G3, and G4, very similar, nearly identical. Don't choose any of these three TVs based on their anti-glare coating. It's the S95D from Samsung that's different. For the first time, Samsung is taking its The Frame anti-glare. No glare at all. You cannot see any mirror image. But the S95D actually has an issue that you saw in not just that comparison, but in my earlier anti-glare comparison of the S95D, when direct bright light hits it, the brighter the light, the more that light diffuses out into the rest of the screen. It kind of flares out, making it unwatchable in many, many cases where it's super bright. However, it does an impossibly phenomenal job eliminating any reflection at all, like the reflection of you on the screen. So if you have a lot of ambient lighting where you often see mirror images of yourself and the surroundings on the TV on dark images, if that annoys you, then the S95D should be considered moving on to skin tones and color accuracy. Out of the box, I'll just say it, they all look great. Sure, you may want to calibrate it to get to the last percentage of accuracy, but for most of you, it's quite satisfying in filmmaker mode out of the box. We're going to go to skin tones next. We are all, they're all in filmmaker mode. They're the most accurate modes out of the box. Ooh, let me go the other way. I think I went too dark. We're in the crappiest mode. <laughs> Pretty much. We're in the most accurate lifeless mode, everyone. Right. This is the accurate lifeless mode. I wanted to turn up the exposure so you could see the darker skins, right? Because you have to expose to skin color as well. I was exposing to the lighter skin, now exposing to the darker skin. But I think it's safe to say that the G4 and the S95D out of the box are no worse than the Sony A95L out of the box. The only TV here that's calibrated is the G3. And I think the skin tones are pretty much close enough that you're like, you know what? You get a premium TV. Boom, full micro mode. You're there. Next up is HDR content, specifically HDR movies, the image quality, how do these TVs differ? The subtle differences, because again, most of the time they'll be indistinguishable. We're going to talk about those few times they do differ. Check it out. And after the comparisons, I'll share with you what I think about these differences and how they may apply to your use case. Now, the Sony, many of you noticed, the Sony, there is no grass because Sony does not do well tone mapping super bright content. In this case, 2,000 nits. It needs to be closer to 1,000 nits. And since most contents are 1,000 nits, this is not going to be an issue for you. But I noticed that on the G3, the grass is actually a little bit darker, a little bit more fuller. So in this case, the G3 wins the 2,000 nit tone. Well, actually, it ties the S95D. G4 is a touch behind. Now, just quickly, in this scene, it's clear that the G4 is actually a little bit brighter in the whites. And this is what the G4 and the G3 does very well. If it's white, it will be brighter than anything out there. Now, the G, now the S95D is not necessarily less bright. That pinpoint is slight, is matches the G4. It's just everything around it is not as bright. So it's an, there's an argument that maybe here, I'm just going to put it out. Here, the S95D has more subtle uh, tone mapping, but it's bright right there. Whereas on the G4, it's brighter all around, but you still have some detail here. So it's it feels like maybe the S95D is more subtle right there. I honestly don't know what's right because unless we have a master monitor, who knows? The G3 is not as subtle as the G4. So here the G4 does a better job of bringing me more of that cloud shadow detail. And the Sony actually isn't bad. Uh, it adjusted so pretty guys, well to the scene. Every, everybody keep in mind, we're in filmmaker mode. That's why they look so subtle. We are. 
We are in film. If you were to put, put the G4 and the S95D in a more aggressive preset, they would be a good deal brighter. You're just not seeing yes. that because we're in the most accurate preset. So just keep that in uh, mind while we, you know, they look the same. Yep. And the G3 is calibrated. So, I mean, it's, it is. Be a it bit is. Different. The G3 is calibrated, which means it may be less bright than it could be. So, that is, that, that's an excellent point, Brian. It's going, it's a little darker in the G4 S9. Oh, I'm sorry, the S95D's right hand corner. Where that yes, light is. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. It, that, it's possible. It's possible. Uh, so, you know, you bring up another good point. So, these TVs have to manage the power. Uh, and yeah. Classy mentioned this to me. They will vignette the outer edges to give you more brightness in the center. If a TV evenly makes everything bright, there's not enough energy to do all that. So every TV has to make a decision. I think the Sony does that. It vignettes the outside, but it's not a problem because how do you get all the energy there? You, you have European and American energy regulations and you have the limits of the power board, right? So there might be a little vignetting on some TVs, but then you have more brighter spots in the middle. Is it a trade-off? Yeah. And so there's still some improvements to be had in terms of efficiency. I love this scene because you'll notice that the G4 has the brightest sun, but it has the least color in the sun. However, the impact is there. The G3 is second brightest and Sony and the S95D, Sony is probably the least bright, but it has the most color inside that sun. And the S95D is right in between. So QD OLED they want to give you most of that orange luminance, whereas the, L the G3 and the G4 are like, look, we can't push our yellows that bright because W OLED, but we'll add a little bit of white and it makes that scene a little bit brighter. So Brian, let me ask you, is that a trade-off you're willing to take for that HDR impact? Because let me go back to that scene, because you still get the yellow, right, Brian? Except it's just not as yellow as the Sony. And so there's an argument, well, what about creator's intent? Well, creator's intended for this to be bright, so G4 and G3 got that right. It's just they don't have all the color, whereas on the Sony and the Samsung, they got the color, but not bright enough. So I think neither has the creator intent fully delivered. You know, there's no right answer, I think. I did not mention it before, but it's time to talk about the two different OLED panels technologies of these four TVs. On the one hand, you have the LG G3 and G4, otherwise known as W OLED type TVs. They're using white OLED subpixels and older OLED technologies that's still phenomenal as you saw and the newer QD OLED technology from Samsung Display used by the Samsung S95D and the Sony A95L. Now there's a lot of argument. The QD OLED many say including myself is superior in many ways brighter color luminances. In other words pure colors can get a little bit brighter whereas W OLED the white can get brighter, but the pure colors cannot. So oftentimes in an image, when it's supposed to be bright orange, on the W OLED TVs, like the G3 and G4, it looks more of a bright yellow. But if it's white, the bright white on the G4 can get a bit brighter than on the Samsung or the Sony. So the question then is, which one is right? Because as you saw in some scenes, when you want HDR impact, right? The G4 delivers that impact, but doesn't have quite the color saturation of the Samsung or the Sony, which had more color, but didn't quite get as bright. But that color is brighter than what the LG G4 and G3 can deliver. So this is where I'm going to transition my preference over to the G4, because at some point, the brightness I believe is consistent with the HDR impact because it is now a bit brighter, a bit punchier, but does not lose so much color that it's totally inaccurate, right? Rather than being maybe a deep orange, it's a lighter orange, but a lot brighter. I feel that's impactful because when I'm watching a scene and it's explosions and it's fun, that impact, I care less about the exact color saturation and more about the pop from the brightness. And that's my preference. So for me, the G4 wins HDR impact. I think that's where the difference is. So if you watch a lot of SDR movies where that super bright pop is not important to you, the QD OLEDs, either the Samsung or the Sony will do better because it's not about the brightness. It's about just that pure color accuracy at lower brightnesses, right? And when I say lower, I don't mean very dim, just slightly lower. But if you want maximum impact,
Pacific Rim, that's super bright, Mad Max, even Aquaman, the G4 may do the trick a bit better just because it has that extra pop if you want it. Whereas the Sony and the Samsung, they're slightly better than last year in a few things, or rather the Samsung S95D is slightly better than last year in tone mapping, right? Very subtle incremental upgrades, makes it a little bit better than the S95C. But G4, that extra bit of brightness made the difference today. And speaking of HDR image quality, what about streaming in Dolby Vision? So check out the streaming comparisons, but specifically, I compared Dolby Vision on the G4 against the G3 without using Dolby Vision, just basic HDR on Netflix and the Samsung S95D on HDR because Samsung doesn't support Dolby Vision for good reason. Watch and see beginning with streaming in basic HDR 10 on all four TVs. And then we will go into Dolby Vision versus HDR 10. The colors look very similar. There are, you know, as we saw, Miss Carlos. very accurate. Let's turn up, let's check out the shadow detail real quick here. Just see if we're missing anything. Shadow detail looks identical to me. I'm looking at the shadow detail and all of it looks really good. Black levels are the same. Many people were concerned in a dark room with bright parts of the screen raise the blacks on the S95D. Well, I'm overexposing and the answer is no. I, I think it looks great. I, I, I couldn't choose a TV just based on Witcher. So if you guys, that's just why I tell you guys, if you're streaming, these four TVs, the best. Choose the cheaper one that fits. Yep. Whether you like Tizen, Price, you know, it comes with a stand. G3 does not come with a stand. The G4 does, right? Brian, are you ready for Dolby Vision versus HDR? Born ready, baby. Let's do it. There you go. Ah, the delay on are this you thing doing is them all? Are you me. doing all them separately? Yeah. So if you notice... Look, <laughs> My God, you're not even using is, a splitter? This is HDR 10, and this is Dolby Vision. You see it? Look, it says Dolby Vision. That's oh, you doing them separately. All right. So let me make sure you guys see that it's Dolby Vision. See that? Bottom left, Dolby Vision. Top is HDR. All right. So we're going to go into the next scene. I think the next scene might work a little bit better. But because the next scene has some of the specular highlights with shadow detail, you guys can see for yourself the differences. Oh, nailed it. All right. So G4, Dolby Vision, and the other three are HDR10. Specular highlights, identical. I mean, one is not brighter than the other. You would not choose a G4 just because it has Dolby Vision. The A95L is watching, you're watching HDR10. There's no Dolby Vision on the A95L. S95D, same feed, and the G3, same feed. So, but all three TVs, G3, A95L, S95D is receiving Netflix HDR10 feed from my Chromecast. I turned off Dolby Vision. The G4 internal app is getting Dolby Vision directly. And I'll turn up exposure a bit so you guys see more detail. But the reality is, come on, there, <laughs> there is no difference here, guys. Brian, do you see a difference? Not really. Not really. All right. So, you know, the colors... I'll look very similar. And let's go with shadow detail, right? Oh, maybe the shadow detail is better. So let's turn up the exposure. And the answer is no. They're graded nearly identical. Look at the G3 and the G4. That's really apples to apples, right? The G4 is uncalibrated. The G3 is calibrated. So any slight color differences, I'm sure the G4 is calibrated. It will address that. But look at the luminous differences. There are none. The shadow detail is the same as the Samsung and the Sony. So for those of you who are all broken up over getting Dolby Vision, I don't know why. All right. Now let's uh, do that cinematic movement. I really want to try that. So if all you do is stream, it doesn't matter which TV you got. They all look the same, well, other than anti-glare and the viewing environment, right? But as far as the image quality itself, QD OLED, W OLED did not matter at all. They all looked the same. And then you threw in Dolby Vision or Dolby Vision. 
didn't matter, right? G4, G3, Dolby Vision, HDR10, as you saw, they all look the same. And that's great. That means that HDR10 and the processing of static metadata HDR has come so far that essentially you don't need Dolby Vision. Now, many of you are saying, wait, there are some amazing Blu-ray discs out there that was graded in Dolby Vision. It looks really great. I got gotcha. you. So let me know what those movies are, and it may be worthwhile to compare. But I've compared a lot of Dolby Vision discs, and the differences are so minute that I don't think it's worth it because it's different, not necessarily better. So, but you tell me if you guys are Dolby Vision fans, what movies are amazing compared to the non Dolby Vision HDR version? Let's move on <laughs> to motion cinematic movement. I think this is where the G4 really stepped up its game this year. Okay, so the question is, how does it compare to the Sony? It's a match for the Sony. Excellent. Wow. The Sony? Has, you yeah. Said, you think the, 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 wow. Okay, so cinematic movement basically is so my favorite Sony setting in one click. The GeForce the, cinematic movement is my Sony settings with one click. Just putting on cinematic boom, movement. Boom, that, is, Sony that is the name of the video. Stamp it. Put it on the thumbnail. We're done. Yes, LG finally did it. Many of you have asked me, has LG stepped it up? Is this the year that LG OLED TVs match or maybe even beat Sony's motion? And this is the year I think they did do it because, and this is why, on the Sony, right? They have a lot of amazing settings, but you have to play with it. And I got it down to where I knew exactly what setting I wanted. Motion flows, cinema motion. I mean, all these crazy little three or four different switches and settings i got it for movie watching sony nailed it that perfect balance with all those settings between just enough stutter removal right enough image processing to get rid of that stutter but not introduce soap opera well the g4 did it with one press cinematic movement and now that's not the g3 but cinematic movement is AI driven where they identify when there's stutter and they add a bit of that processing. You don't have to do anything at all. On the Sony, you have to get the setting right. On the G4, put it in cinematic movement and it looks as good. Arguably, some say slightly better. I think it looks as good and already convenient. Way to go. LG, G4, and the G3 has it. You nailed it, but the difference is when the G4 has it turned off, the stutter is also somewhat eliminated, very close to cinematic movement. The G3, stuttering mess. So the G4 overall is definitely improved over the G3 in terms of motion. It's at least a match for the Sony. Unfortunately, the A95L is technically a 2023 TV. We don't expect a flagship QD OLED from Sony this year, maybe next year. So we'll see what happens now. Let's wrap this up. A couple of final comparisons to help you guys decide. G4, G3. If you're just streaming, get the G3. It looks so close to the G4. Other than some minor differences, G4, a little bit brighter in sports, a little bit brighter specular highlights. A lot of people say that near black, it's improved. But ultimately, for most people, if you're streaming movies, G3 is the value. It looks identical. If you are an enthusiast, or, or a gamer, 144 hertz gaming, then G3 is not for you. Get the G4, but G3, still a great performer. Now, what about the G4 versus the A95L or the Samsung S95D, both 2024 TVs versus the A95L? Both of these 2024 TVs are brighter than the A95L, but what content is that bright? Very few, other than sports, where you know you want sports to be bright, like hockey, Sony cannot keep up in bright sports content. But other than that, the Sony still does well, but it is a little bit expensive. So if these prices drop on the S95C and the G4 down to less than the Sony, get it. If you value those brightness, brightness specs, but Ultimately, the Sony is still a competitor. So if Sony ends up being a little bit cheaper and you don't care about brightness, Sony also is great. I prefer the A95L over the G3 because of uniformity, because 
both the G3 and the G4. Now, my G4 actually had pretty good uniformity. So, to the screen effect, the G3, the G3 had problems with uniformity last year. A95L did not. This year, the S95D continues with its great uniformity as well because QD OLED tends to have better uniformity. The G4 appears to have addressed some of those uniformity issues. I'm not complaining about the G4, mine at least, still a panel lottery. So A95L, still good, but you want an extra bit of brightness. Both the S95D and G4 has it over the Sony A95L. But now, what about these two together? <laughs> the G4 versus the S95D. Well, you got the anti-glare. You either like it or you don't. If you don't like it, you don't need it. It doesn't match your room. G4 all the way. But let's say you're in a dark room, right? Anti-glare, non-issue. Okay, dark room, light control, S95C or S95D. We already know the S95D beat the S95C. That's why they're not here. The S95D is the superior TV. 95D, G4. Which one? I would choose the LG G4 for three reasons. First, five-year warranty. That also applies to the G3. Second, this is something many of you will disagree with me. I prefer the extra brightness because now it's so bright that I cannot ignore it. HDR impact is superior because of that brightness. Sports, I watch a lot of sports. That extra brightness in a bright room, I think is important. Many of you don't care. But for those who watch hockey and do not want it to dim, the G4 does not dim. The S95D, I didn't notice it dim either, but the G4 really is a bright TV overall. And a fourth reason, cinematic movement. So the G4 is my HDR TV champ for 2024. So far, because you want it bright and punchy. It's got a five-year warranty just in case you're afraid of burning because it's so bright and punchy. It's got cinematic movement. What does that sound kind of vulgar? Bright sports, right? So add it all up. Congratulations, LG. You are now in the lead for best HDR TV of 2024. Now, why do I say in the lead? Because possibly Sony's release of the 4000 Mini LED TV may take that lead. But for now, G4, you're my favorite. Until next time, stop the FOMO.